Hey everybody, welcome to homework number one, classification levels. You'll need a piece of paper today to do this homework. You're going to want to take notes, um, and you're also going to want to fill out um, the chart that I give you here in a little bit. Um, also, just keep in mind that not only what is written on the screen is important, the things that I'm saying, I don't write everything that I say. So some of the things that I say, or if I continue to repeat things, you're going to want to write those things down as well. So let's get started. So as we've talked about this week, all things are classified. All things around us are in life are classified, and so it makes sense that all living things would also be classified. And when I say classified, I mean organized into groups. So living things are going to be classified or organized um, based on evolutionary relationships and physical characteristics. So we look back and we see how things were related according to the theory of evolution um, and a common ancestor. And then scientists also look at physical characteristics. They look at those to see um, how things are dif uh, different and how they're similar. So we know, as we learned earlier this week, that scientific names um, are going to be derived or they come from this system of classification. Um, we use the genus and the species specifically to make scientific names. So one way to think about it is um, the medieval times. So in medieval times, we had a king, we had the nobles and the church officials, we had knights, and we had peasants. And there was a hierarchy there. There were layers of society, as you see in this picture. So the people that had the most power were at the top. They oversaw the most. Um, and then the people that had the littlest power um, were down at the bottom. So the peasants. Um, they did most of the work in society. They helped society along, um, but they had very little power. Um, and so the king, there's a hierarchical system. There's a, um, a set of layers throughout this society. Um, and the classification is similar in this way also. So here is the hierarchical system for living things. Um, we start with the word domain, then we go down to kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Um, I like this diagram because um, for many reasons. One, it shows you the plural for each word. And so that might seem simple for things like domain and for kingdom. Um, but when you get to the word phylum right here, okay, it's plural changes to phyla. Um, and so something just to keep in mind, it's the same word. Don't let it confuse you if you see it on a test or a quiz. It just means more than one phylum. Um, so what I would like you to do is I want you to copy down this chart, okay? I want you to draw it exactly how you see it. So I want you to draw a domain with this big box at the top going all the way down um, to species and make species the smallest one, okay? Because what that means is that domain includes the most organisms. We only have three domains for this entire world. Um, and when we get down to species, by the time we get down to that level, we only have one organism that can be classified at that species level. Um, and so take a second, go ahead and pause this video um, to copy this down, and I'm going to add some things I would like you to also write with it. So what I would like you to write um, is a device to help you remember this or, uh, order. So um, you are going to be tested on the actual order, so knowing its domain, then kingdom, then phylum, then class, then order, then family, then genus, then species. And so we need to find a way to remember this. And so one of the ways that our classes always do this um, is we have an acronym. We use Darling, Katie, Perry, Came, Over, for great soup. So, if you need to, if you can't um, remember it this way, you are more than welcome to come up with something different. Um, just make sure it's the same order. So, obviously we said the biggest one was the domain. So, here on the left, you have the three domains of life. And so, um, it's broken into three categories. We have our eubacteria, archaea bacteria, um, or just archaea, and the eukaryota, or our eukaryotes. And so, really, if you think about it, we can divide this like that. Because these two are prokaryotes with our bacteria. So, our um, organisms that don't have a nucleus... Um, and then our organisms over here, which are eukaryotes or organisms that do have a nucleus. And so if you notice, a lot of the things that we think about, um, plants, animals, fungi, protists, all of those are in the eukaryote um, kingdom, or sorry, domain. They're in the eukaryote domain. Um, over here, we have our two bacteria, and that's it. 
Okay, so um, even though there's three, they have similarities and they are broken up de or depending on something we've already talked about, um, their type of cell um, and then their characteristics in breaking that down a little bit further, distinguishing between the two types of bacteria. So after that, um, over here, we have our kingdom. So if you um, see, it's kind of small, but you can see our plant kingdom, our animal kingdom, fungi, our eubacteria, our archaea bacteria, and our protist. So even though they're in different domains, we still have a kingdom for the archaea bacteria and the eubacteria. And so you'll notice they'll be in their own separate domains. So archaea bacteria would be here and our eubacteria would be in the eubacteria domain, while all of these are going to fall under the eukaryota domain. So what's the purpose of this? How does this work? Well, um, if you look at this, this seems to be a total mess, okay? But really, it's not too difficult to understand. So we start with our domain, our largest level of classification. That's going to include the most organisms. And as we work our way to species, we're getting fewer and fewer organisms that are in the same category. So if you notice, by the time we get to family, for example, we have one two, three, four organisms in that same family, okay? And this is the name of it right here. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that. So it um, gets smaller, and we cut out organisms every level we go. So by the time we get to species, as you can see um, following this little line of cutie little squirrels, okay, by the time we get to species, we have one organism remaining, okay? One organism is the only one we have left um, once we get to this level of species. So again, another example of this, right? We start in the kingdom of um, Animalia or the animal kingdom. And if you notice, there is such a wide variety of organisms within the animal kingdom. I mean, it includes things that students don't even realize are animals, okay? So for example, we've got grizzly bears sitting next to the starfish, okay, or the sea star, right? And as we go down, you see things begin to drop off. So here we don't have the, um, the sea star is not a part of this phylum. And then the snake is not a part of the mammal class. Um, and then the squirrel drops off and then the fox and then the panda and then the black bear. And we're left with um, this brown bear here. And so we can see, according to the theory of evolution, how these organisms are related based off of their classification. All right, so here is why um, we're looking at this, okay? So one of the ways that you're going to be tested on this information um, is what you see in front of you. So you have two organisms, a bobcat and a lion, right? And they give you the kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species for each one. So a question they might ask you is, um, at what level were these last two organisms related, Okay, so what you would want to do is you would want to look in and you would say, okay, well, their kingdom is the same, their phylum is the same, they're the same class, they're the same order, they're the same family. Oh, but wait, here is where they change. Their genus is now different. Okay, so at this point, right, it looks like a Q-tip. Anyway, at this point, okay, their genus and their species are different. What you're going to notice is every time an organism um two organisms are different at a level, everything else below them is going to, that level is going to be different also. Okay, so um, a lot of times, like I said, you're going to see this in terms of which organisms are more related than the, you know, than the other organisms. And you're going to look for who has the most levels in common. The fewer the levels they have in common, the less related they are. The more they have in common, the more related they are. So keep that in mind as you take this um, into your test and things like that. All right, so we're done with the video, um, and here is your debrief. Why is a classification system important in the scientific community? So think about these different levels, okay? Think about your darling Katy Perry came over for, oop, great soup, okay? Think about how that works um, and think about why we need a system like this, okay, um, and why it might be helpful to us, okay? Um, if you don't know the answer to the debrief, make sure you give it your best shot and then talk to your teacher tomorrow. Have a good one, y'all.